2,000 years outside of a brief moment in the book of Acts. Holy Spirit's been on a FM while the church has been on AM. We've been on two different complete wavelengths, but I promise you by the time this thing is over and through the furnace of that environment, I promise you the church and the Holy Spirit are going to be saying the same thing. Did you hear what I said? Eight times in the Gospels and eight times in the book of Revelation, Jesus says, hear what the Spirit says to the church. Cultivate a hearing ear for what the Spirit is saying. We're going to see a deep intimacy, fellowship, and submission to the Holy Spirit. Practically speaking, what does that look like? If God's going to do this in Revelation 22, what does that mean for you today? If the Lord's going to begin to bring the church into the unity of the faith, and as we come into alignment with Holy Spirit, He's going to begin to bring the church into the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God. What does it look like for us to begin to move into that? I'll tell you what it looks like. Hear me. You want to get practical? Here it is. Make Holy Spirit your best friend. Make Holy Spirit your best friend. I'm here to tell you right now, Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. He is your eternal companion. He's not just going to be with you till Jesus comes. Jesus says in John 14, and He will abide with you forever. Which means that for millions and millions of years, you will always relate with Jesus via Holy Spirit. There's no getting rid of him that he will forever be living on the inside of you. Beloved, I'm so gripped in this hour with the burden. And I believe that the burden is this, that we do not have a clue of who lives on the inside of us. We do not have a clue what took place the day we were born again of the Spirit and who came and took up residence on the inside of us. God has placed his very life. His very love, His very power, His very nature. He placed His deep on the inside of our deep. He took His deep and placed it on the inside of our deep. And we have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the sad travesty that is plaguing the body of Christ is that we have a billion dollars living in our belly and we're living on 20 cents a day. Forgive me, Lord. We're looking for Him everywhere without. We're running to this place and that. I love all the books, the CDs, the conferences. We're running like chickens with our heads cut off. And yet we have failed to find Him where He is. Deep within the core of our being. We have not yet taken the time to slow down the busyness of our lives. The busyness of our schedules. The busyness of our responsibilities to dial down and to begin to dig a well on the inside. Beloved, I want to tell you right now that there is all that He has given to you is on the inside. And I am tired of running around while neglecting the very well and glory that's on the inside of me. Many believers are living on life support in the kingdom. We're living, barely living from cycle to cycle to cycle, and we fail to find Him where He is. Everybody put your hand on your belly. I want to introduce you to somebody this afternoon. Everybody say, Good afternoon, Holy Spirit. I want you to make top priority in this season, making Him your best friend. Three ways to make Him your best friend. The first one comes to the Word of God, and it's this. Slow down. Slow down. Quit trying just to fulfill all your daily devotionals and all your daily readings and get through everything as quick as possible. And when words jump off the page, put the Bible down and begin to talk to Jesus through the Word by the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Slow down. Begin to take verses and turn them into prayers. Phrases and turn them into prayers. Words and turn them into prayers. Begin to picture, visualize, set yourself in the story and calm down long enough for, those, for you to get un, unfamiliarize yourself with the Word so that you can begin to get familiar with them for the first time. I, everybody says, I know that verse. My question is, does that verse know you? 
Does John 3.16 know you? Do those verses know you? Or would they say, yeah, I've seen him run by me a few times. He's pretty busy. It's kind of like, you know how you are on the highway. Some of you may be this person. The guy driving down the road 25 miles per hour on a 70 mile per hour highway. And most of us will run right by him and scream, speed up! It's kind of the way I picture God. He kind of hangs out in the 25 mile per hour zone. And most of our lives are running at 90. And we can't slow down long enough to actually connect with him where he is and get a breakthrough into a whole new place in God. Meditation in the Word. Get it in your mouth and talk to Him about it. Number two, talk to Holy Spirit. Talk to Him. Mike has phenomenal resources on this stuff. And number three, I've written this book called Glory Within. I believe that one of the most neglected secrets of engaging Holy Spirit is by praying for extended times in the Holy Spirit. Praying in your prayer language is one of the clearest and most practical ways of engaging Holy Spirit. We've turned it into a badge. We've turned it into a have or have not. And we're completely missing the purpose that it is the key that unlocks the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the key that unlocks the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I would invite all of you into 20 to 30 minutes a day of extended times of praying in the Holy Spirit. Seriously, take your car rides, take your work commutes, take your morning hours, take your night hours, and begin to find windows of extended times of praying in the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, your life will change. I promise you, you will move out of dullness, you will move out of apathy, and you will begin to hear more than you've ever heard. Are you with me this afternoon? If Holy Spirit and me are going to become one, then I've got to begin to talk to Him and engage Him like never before. 